You always hear people talk about the all-out insanity that is Fortnite's endgame. There's videos about how to survive, how to rotate, even how to get there without any weapons. <laughs> Guilty. But yeah, there's not as many videos that discuss how to get to endgame in the first place. In any battle royale game, the early game is vital. It's the time where you generally have the most freedom to set yourself up for the win. In your typical solo Fortnite match, around 75% of the lobby usually dies before the first circle even closes. In most competitive lobbies, that number is still above 50%. While dying early is sometimes inevitable, loot randomness has always been an issue in the early game. But with Season 9 weapon changes, it's now an even bigger problem than ever. It's become a bit more difficult lately to gather an effective loadout. We'll get into the reasons why later, but just know this for now. In Season 9, it's worth it to spend more time looting so that you can get a proper kit. Only opening a few chests will leave you with little materials and subpar weapons. The more loot you can gather, the better. So, how do you gather more loot? Well, for pub matches, you generally want to avoid any hot locations. Like we said earlier, lots of players tend to drop off the bus as soon as they're able to. That or they choose nearby points of interest that are commonly overpopulated. Areas like Paradise Palms, Pleasant Park, or Mega Mall, the Lagoon, or Dusty Divot. Or if you enjoy using a baller for mobility, then locations that have them might end up suiting you better. If you're not concerned about those aspects, the most important thing to worry about is having a sizable amount of loot at the location. The reason why Season 9 early games have become more random has to do with the weapon changes that occurred prior to and during Season 9. First, the pump was removed, RIP, and replaced with the combat shotgun. Right now, the combat is best in slot for close range weaponry by far, mainly due to its ranged capabilities. The tactical shoddy doesn't even come close in terms of effectiveness. In terms of strength, the combat is arguably as good as the pump shotgun, but previously, the chance of finding a pump was three to four times higher than that of finding a combat in season nine. Chests and hoping it has a good item in it, there are two other ways that you can consistently get better weapons, like the combat early on. First would be vending machines. For each rarity of vending machine available, the combat has a chance of being inside. The second and probably easiest way to find a combat shotgun in season nine would be in the hotspots. Introduced early on in Season 9, at least on point of interest on the map will be a hotspot, indicated by its name being yellow on the map. These hotspots have loot carriers. When shot down, they drop blue or higher rarity items. With easily over a dozen of them spawning at each location, the amount of high quality loot that comes out of here is just insane. Careful though, most players already know this. You're very likely to have players land with you at these hotspots. Too hot of a drop and it won't be worth it. However, if it's a hotspot near the end of the bus path, just like other zones, there'll be fewer players. At that point, it can definitely be worth landing at. Just a quick update. While we were making this video, Epic went ahead and nerfed the range damage of the combat in patch 9.3. While it definitely brings the strength of the combat down, it only does by a bit. It's still better at every range than the attack shotgun by far. The combat is still really strong, and you should still be looking to find one during the early game in order to not be at a disadvantage. Getting eliminations is probably the single greatest way to gather good loot. However, it's not always the easiest. Sure, nutty pro players can W key everyone they see and get away with it, but most of us can't build as fast or land as many shots as they can. We need to pick and choose our fights, and choose them smartly. The right strategy depends on the situation. If you've been following the advice of our guide and landing in remote locations, one great strategy is to go for kills like a vulture. It's not uncommon for players in high pop zones to be low on HP and material. They've been fighting the whole game, while you've kept your full HP farming and looting instead. They've been fighting the whole game while you've kept your full HP farming and looting instead. So if you manage to get a head start in your rotation, drop in on nearby locations to fight any weak remaining players. That way you can swoop in, get the easy kill, and nab all the good loot they've fought for. However, always make sure that you keep your storm's location in the back of your mind. Unless you've got over a full minute head start on the storm, you generally don't want to start fights until you reach the safe zone. Even when you're safe inside it, you're sometimes better off not initiating any fights. I mean, I'm with you, I also want to see some action, I want to eliminate some bots, but this cautious approach is due to other players likely rotating in as well. The chances of a third party interrupting the fight are much higher. If you know somebody's near you, like at your landing spot, getting the drop on them can often be the deciding factor on you winning that fight. When landing at the start of the game, look around the surroundings to see if any opponents land with you. If you're able to, pay attention to the specific spot they land as well. You can then use that knowledge to roughly figure out when and where they'll rotate. Once your kit is good enough, you can look for the kill. When you're on the hunt, utilize what high ground is available to you, like rooftops. This will help you scout out opponents easier, and also gives you a startling high ground advantage should a fight occur. If you're able to connect a few rifle shots before they spot you, you've put yourself at a great advantage for winning the fight. If you miss, no real harm gets done, since they can't retaliate easily while you hold high ground. 
Of course, if you get contested and would rather not fight, you can always slink away. There's nothing wrong with leaving a POI early if you didn't get adequate loot or don't feel like fighting. You can use that time to loot around any surrounding areas, gather more mats, or get a head start on rotating to the safe zone. Here are a few tips for fighting indoors, like for when a player can test your house. First and foremost, find a weapon. Hit what mats you can in the form of furniture or whatever else is available. Then find some cover where the approaching angle is on your right side. For instance, if there are some stairs in the house, you can hold them so that you can see all approaching players without having to peek yourself. Just make sure the opening is to your right and that your character model is behind cover. We've talked about the advantages of peeking to the right instead of left before, but to reiterate again, you have more visibility and you can shoot sooner. This way, you can surprise your opponent and make sure you get your shot in first. One thing a lot of players forget is that they're able to build indoors. You won't be able to ramp rush or crank 90s or anything, but you should still be placing when you can. If you haven't found a good weapon yet and you're not ready to fight, place floors, walls, stairs, and cones behind you to slow your opponent down. You'll also be alerted to their position when they go to break through your build. This is why it's important to be farming mats as soon as you can. Being able to place builds versus a W key or with a better weapon can end up turning the fight in your favor. It also gives you the chance to go for edit plays when they might not be expecting it. 